<laughs> they finally got shackles to put on. Must have given them quite the scare when I tried to climb the wall. <laughs> Isn't that funny? <laughs> <laughs> Look, I made a flower crown. <laughs> Festival preparations seem to be going well. Hey. Aren't you going to go? Keep going. I'm gonna be talking to myself, aren't I? Okay, hold on. I'm you, but not you. My kingdom hearts. <laughs> I am not going anywhere. You're a strange one. It's much nicer out there than it is in here. If anyone is to leave, not be me. Hey, been wondering. Who are you in here? I was created to carry your pain. That doesn't answer the question. I cannot give you any other one though. I carry your pain for you and offer you the one to talk to. So the last remaining flame of hope in your heart doesn't flicker out. How very. You sound like a saint. I don't know how you could stand living like that. <laughs> what? What's so funny? Nothing. Yes. You don't remember anything. Don't consider my word to be saintly, but if you leave it that way, then that's thanks to you, because that's who you're not making it. My dear, knowing what I care would only cause you pain. So, I just beg you to live on. Do not give up hope. Where am I supposed to find hope? Chained up in the tower. You've been with me long enough. You see me. My body is on the verge of death.
only black cloud filled my spirit. I despise every one of them who did this to me. I want to kill them myself. And I hate that I lack the power to do so. I want to place a curse on all. Don't talk like that, Margaret. Please keep your spirit pure. Don't talk. Like cursing people. There's still hope. Someone. Someone will come to save. Maybe one of the three have a change of heart. Or maybe someone else will come through the door. Just have a little patience. There's no point. Even if someone does come, I have nowhere to return to. I have no. That's not true. All those years when the Lord had you someone came and set you free and someone will no one's coming That was a miracle. A one-time miracle. The flaxen-haired boy, he lied to me. This world is nothing but the truth. No one is going to set me free anymore. Actually... There is one possibility for my salvation. Perfect. Then we'll wait for them to come. Yes, let's... Let's wait for an angel... An angel to come. Morgana. Deliver divine punishment onto the sinner. Who would defile me? Brian and early. Hey. Yeah, not like I've got much else on my plate. Well, aren't you quite the workaholic? 
You know, you're getting to be about that age when most girls would close up shop and settle down with a man of three. <laughs> and you know no man wants to get hitched with this kind of bitch. That rhymed. <laughs> Fair enough. Most girls in this biz are rough around the edges. But you're rough all the way through. Like how you got all up in the clan's faces the other day. Now that was a sight to see. But anyway. A blacksmith brought this by for you. Huh? Oh, that. I was planning to go pick that up myself. Special thanks for being such a faithful patron, I, he said. Never met another prostitute who regulars at the smithy. That's one heck of a hobby. Maybe so, but it's the only hobby I have. Not going to lie, that's a little scary. What kind of girl collects knives? What kind of girl doesn't like something nice and shiny? There's nothing more to that, right? It's just a collection. Not for you two. Like, use or anything? Like I said, they're shiny. And when have I ever drawn a knife on any of you? Never, right? Oh no. Now use them on us. The thought never crossed my mind. I know how much you care about us girls. I just mean... You're not planning to do anything, like, dangerous. <laughs> oh no! Hell no! You're way overthinking it. If you say so. It just looks like... This one was made for a special current. Occasion for something. Even had your name engraved in it. What's so strange about that? Collectors get their names engraved on shit all the time. I once had a ex mercenary for a client. And he told me people engrave names and weapons for all sorts of reasons. The name of someone you love to help strengthen your resolve. Your own name as a symbol of honor. Is this for? How much honor does a dirty old whore like me even have? Like I said, it's just my hobby. I like shiny things, and that's all there is to it. Now hand it over. Promise me you won't do anything dangerous with it. Pinky swear. Thanks. Sorry, friend. Keep going. Oh, I, Maria. I guess Maria actually gets to narrate a little. Mama. Let's go! <laughs> it had been four years since the raid on the brothel, and we were still just barely getting back on our feet. It would never be the same as before, though. Not because we had to move locations. But because the slums were shrinking away to almost nothing thanks to the Lord's renovations. 
Not to mention all the new foreign women who sold their services up in the city's bustling marketplace. Most of our old regulars had taken their business there, and we weren't drawing in much in the way of new blood either. With better options to get the rocks off, only the real oddballs went for the rundown whorehouse and a little back alley in the slums. It was enough to keep us afloat, but we'd hardly last another six months. A year if we were real lucky. And while we were down here fighting to make it day by day, our ever-gracious Lord was planning a festival to celebrate the spring harvest. Celebrations were to take place in and around the new church set up across the river, and with this being the first annual harvest festival, the whole city was in a rather jolly mood. Everyone except us slum rats, of course. The merchants, the upper class, and even most of the regular citizens were in love with the Lord. Public opinion took a huge turn after the new church opened its doors. I presumed it was all part of his grand plan. Me, on the other hand, I was far from pleased. He had abandoned us in the slums. Left all his old friends out to dry because he wanted a little extra gold. And like hell, I was going to stand for that. Word through the grapevine was the Lord and his bodyguard spent a lot of time at the new church. A nun everyone called the Saintess worked there, handing out some kind of miracle elixir. I assumed it was her that he had business with. But his business didn't matter so much as the fact that he was there. There was no way I was getting through the fortifications around his manor on the hill. But the church wouldn't be nearly as well protected. Last night, I snuck onto the grounds to survey the area, and there was no sign of any guards or people at all. So it wouldn't likely be difficult for me to slip into the building and hide there until he showed up. Tonight, I brought everything. I was going all in. These past four years, my feelings for him have been, well, mixed, to put it lightly. I knew damn well he wasn't the same man I grew up with. But a part of me, deep down, wanted to believe that man was still there. That maybe he had some reason, and I just wasn't seeing it. That I was misinterpreting him somehow. But if I was right, and the old Jacobo was gone, I would settle it once and for all tonight. It's quiet in there. Doors locked tight. Figures. Now with that out of the way, how do I want to get in? Could break a window. I'd rather not make that much noise, though. Now, who do we have here? He's heading for the mansion. Maybe he's got a key. I was gonna bail if I ran across anyone. But that might not be necessary. Hmm. Huh, how much longer am I going to have to deal with this? Can't believe he's holding a festival.
He's got to be out of his mind. I said it's higher to worry about this than the... Huh? Don't move. Huh? Uh, what? Oh, and no squealing either. One peep and this little baby will carve you up a brand new mouth. What? What? Who are... Uh, 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 are you a thief? I don't want your shit. Oh, good. <laughs> I just want you to answer a couple questions. If you can do that for me, you get to keep your throat in one piece. Uh, what do you want from me? What are you doing here? The Lord comes by here pretty often, right? I want to have a little chat with him. What? Uh, are you out of your mind? I, I, I can't let you see the Lord. Oh, alright. Nighty night then. <laughs> Wait! I'm not fucking around. I don't care who you are. If you're going to cover for him, then say your prayers and curse your bad luck. What's it going to be, little man? D d don't hurt me, please. Where's the Lord? He's not... He's not here. Well, it was nice knowing you. Slow down! He, he He's not here now! But he'll be here at dawn. Is that so? I... I'm not comfortable saying any more out here. Someone might see us. It'll be safer. We go to my room and talk more there. And how do I know you're not going to slip the second I let go? I, I swear. I don't know you either. But you're not here. I just talk. To the Lord, are you? I'm doing what he says, but not because I agree with him. But if anything, I'm on your side. You're better at sucking dick than most <laughs> of the prostitutes I know. I I mean it. <laughs> At the very least, we can't have a productive conversation if we're both on edge like this. Huh. You got a decent head on your shoulders for someone who is within seconds of losing it. Alright, you convinced me. Lead the way, little man. But if you so much as breathe suspiciously, your head will roll. I, I get it. On your feet. Glad I ran into oh, someone without a spine. I hate my life. I'd definitely have trouble sleeping after this if I had to kill a complete stranger. Well, well. Nice looking room you got for yourself, little man. So, the Lord's going to be here bright and early, you said. But why? Well, um... Daytime, I'd understand if he was here to play friendly with all his followers. 
but no one's gonna be here at the ass crack of dawn. They're not his followers. The patrons of the church are true believers in the word of God. I can't say I'm convinced. Looks more to me like he's built himself a damn cult. Oh. Now, my question? I, I, uh, the Lord. It's important business to attend to in the mornings. I'm not stupid. I'm asking what his business is. Mm, I can't. I can't tell you that. Only that he'll be here early in the morning. You think I'm just gonna take you at your word? Oh, I can't tell you why, but I promise he'll be here. It's really, really important, so just wait here till the morning. So I sit on my thumbs, morning rolls around, and whoosh, I'm never seen again. That sound about right? No, no! Then answer my question. What's he gonna be doing here so early? Uh, he's coming to check on some valuable assets. Say again. I I help manage his assets. Uh, not because I want to. He's threatening me. And what are these assets? Um, Spit it out. I can't. I really can't. Anything but that. What if I say I'll kill you if you don't? Go right ahead. Threaten me all you want. That's the one thing I can never tell anyone. Because we'll make you disappear if you spill? It's not... It's not my safety I care about. My sister. They'll kill my sister if I tell anyone! So I can't say anything. You have a sister? She's my only family. I see. So the Lord's blackmailing you to help manage his assets. And as part of that, he's also holding your sister hostage? Not directly, but essentially, yes. Sick, rotten fuck. I don't have any family myself. But a few years back, there was this girl who was like a sister to me. Huh? Uh oh, uh oh. And he. he felt kind of the same way about her, or at least I thought. But now he's fallen so far, he's taken some kid's sister hostage. Um, maybe I'm reading into things, but do you actually know the Lord? Hmm, I did. Like a former mistress or something? Oh, hell no. We grew up together, believe it or not. Huh? So, used to be a noble? 
No, you dingus. I didn't think so. You don't seem particularly dignified. Yep, just a dirty old whore here. Sorry to disappoint. Whoa, whoa, I never said that. Anyway, that's all you need to know about me and the Lord. Uh, Alright. Now, what about you? You known him for long? About six months, maybe? So no, but you've been in regular contact with him that whole time. Tell me. What's he like these days? And don't worry, the knife's taking a nap. Just tell me whatever you can. I'm curious. I don't know much. Alright. The only time I really see the Lord is when we, um, when we meet up to check in on his assets. No chat or anything like that. He always seems to be in a foul mood. He always gives me dirty looks whenever he sees me. Even though you're working together? Like I said, I'm not doing it because I want to. I just wound up in this position. Go on. I'll tell you this, though. The monster. The cruel, evil, heartless man. No one with a conscience can do the things he does. He doesn't care how much pain he causes. Anyone who doesn't fall in line is eliminated. His reputation is improving. Got the same disvouching brand. Oh, a load of crap. A villain and a tyrant. Sounds just like the previous lord. Huh? Previous lord? You not from around here, little man? But no. I live somewhere far away, and just sort of ended up here recently. Well, that explains it. There was a different guy on the throne up till about four years ago. He was a vicious, barbaric fuck who treated people like his playthings. He would murder slaves by the dozen just for shits. And he did some very bad things to a little girl. This new lord is exactly the same. Or just another commodity to him. Man or woman or child. He doesn't care as long as they're useful. Oh, I gotta reopen the share screen, sorry. <laughs> to press circle. He'll hurt people, he'll kill them. Anything to get what he wants. I got that impression. After everything I've seen and heard, was I honestly hoping? Tell me he wasn't as bad as the previous lord. I've heard enough. He's gone over the edge and there's no bringing him back. I was originally planning to talk to him. But that was never going to work. He's a lost cause. So what are you going to do? I'm 
gonna make sure he can't shame himself any more than he has by putting an end to his miserable life. You wanna see the Lord gone too, don't you? Get out of this shitty hole he's thrown you in. I, I, um... Cause if you do, then stick your neck out and give me a hand. You know what'll happen if you keep on like this. Once your job's done, once he's done with you, you're gone. You're not stupid enough to think he'd let you live, are you? What'll it be? You gonna go on being his obedient little bitch? Or are you gonna give him what's coming? Mm. All right. I'll help. Excellent. Your tailor must be damned skilled to accommodate walls that big. <laughs> oh. Honestly, I've been waiting six months for this. I don't have to show up. Keep me a way out. While waiting for the sun to rise, me and the little man hashed out our plan of attack. The Lord kept a skilled bodyguard around at almost all times, so we wanted to avoid causing any trouble while they were together. He was only alone for a small window of time. When he arrived at the church each morning, he would first head for his private study, unguarded. That was our chance. Time was limited, which meant we'd make it simple, move quickly. We had the element of surprise on our side, though. I could do this. No, there was no room for even the slightest uncertainty. I would do this. I didn't care about saving the people from an oppressive, oppressive despot or anything grand and honorable like that. All I wanted was to stop an old friend from falling any further. That was my entire reason for assassinating the Lord of the Land. I wouldn't be a hero if I pulled it off. I'd be an insurgent. But to hell with my reputation. I'd be hunted down and killed for my crimes not long after anyway. Jack Will is your old friend. I'll join you on your trip to hell. And then, at long last, the moment arrived. A moment. Continue. Exactly as Mel had said. The Lord showed up at the mansion early the next morning with bodyguard in tow. The Lord disappeared into his study, and then the bodyguard headed for the chapel. Once he was out of sight, I glanced over at Mel and nodded. Who is it? It's, uh... It's me. There's something I need to talk to you about. We'll be seeing each other shortly anyway. What it is, you can tell me then. I can't wait. It's important. And I don't want anyone to overhear. 
Is it about the assets? Yeah. Fine. Come in. Here goes. I took a deep breath. Hold it in. It would all be done in a matter of seconds. All our memories together, the time we shared. It's straight down to the grave. What? So long, Jacobo. I'll see you down in hell. However, not a thing went according to plan. <clears throat> ah! My resolve rendered null in an instant. My confidence shattered like glass. My vengeance brushed aside like nothing. My outstretched knife hit empty air. And without even enough time to blink, my whole world shifted. I wasn't looking at my loathsome target's face. But the flat, unadorned ceiling above me. My body spun. And then something slammed against my back. <laughs> With barely enough time to even gasp, I crashed into the floor. It all happened faster than the blink of an eye. He had me on the ground, knee pressed into my back. My arm twisted up into the air. Uh, what? I had him! I had the element of surprise! How could he... It's like he knew exactly what was coming. How could he react so quickly? You look perplexed. Well, unfortunately for you, I see my share of assassination attempts. Ugh. But you, you, I wasn't expecting. Let me go. I thought if anyone, you might be different. The hell are you going on about? Were you even going to try to talk to me before killing me? There's nothing to talk about. Not a goddamn thing. I've heard what you've done, what you're doing. <laughs> well, credit where it's due. At least you didn't try to poison me. Either way, there's plenty you could have done better. Second rate attempt at best. You rushed, knowing you didn't have much time, but you still could have used the fact that we know each other most of our lives to get a little closer before pulling the knife. That increased your chances a little. Alternatively, you could try to distract me to your body. Bad that I could swallow your pride long enough to do that. Shut your fucking... Get off me! Uh, 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 are you trying to break my arm? You would break an old friend's arm? Don't take me for a fool. You just tried to kill me, you conniving harlot. Now. No. 
not even a man, a useless sack of flesh. Call me whatever you like. Heard all and more. <laughs> Lord, the boy was sneaking about, so I apprehended him. Hmm. Run away the first time your grand plan going south. I see you haven't grown a spine yet, have you, boy? Then a better chance they both came up me up together. Shall I kill him? Quit your drooling dog. I want you to watch him. Make sure he doesn't try and run again. And what about the woman? She tried to attack you. Shall I kill her? Right ahead. Go right the fuck ahead. Kill me like you killed everyone else. Cut off my head, put it on a pike in the town square. Everyone? You know, you're right. Nearly like everyone can think of die by my hands. Grashen, the rest of the gang, and Jaren too. Excuse me? I thought Jaren died in the raid on the brothel. But you're saying you killed her? That's right. of becoming the lord that fucked you up. You were always on the other side. From the day we first met. I should have never trusted you. Fuck. So it was all bullshit, was it? Every last minute of it. Door somewhere I can see her, dog. Why not just kill her? The last thing I need is people making a big fuss about dead bodies showing up while we're preparing for the festival. It's not like a TM whore poses a real danger to me. Especially not with her arm bending backwards. No need to waste more time concerned about her. What the fuck? What the fuck, man? You won't even fucking kill me? I... I came in here with no intention of coming back out. And you don't even have the decency to do that much for me. Shut your goddamn mouth already! <sighs> Leave your key here, dog. I'll hand her a business alone today. So I just had to drag the whore out then. What a disappointment. Don't get any funny ideas. Just because someone told you not to kill her, doesn't mean you can sate your thirst to sweat her arms or legs. You throw her out and nothing more. Understood? Clear as crystal, Lord. You get out of here. I hate, I hate myself for ever thinking you were a good guy. Enjoy an eternity in hell, asshole. Uh... Now, how do you plan to make up for this mess you so kindly made for me? You know damn well how busy I am right now. I, um, I had no choice. She threatened me. Yes, you had no choice but to hold up with her until morning. You had no choice but to lie about having business with me. Uh, uh, mm. Don't give me that look. Like I told a dog, I have no interest in creating any bodies during the festival prep. So I'll let you off the hook for this one. What? 
And you swear you'll never do anything like this again. Y yes, sir. I swear on my life. Excellent. Next. Mm. <coughs> uh. With that, the books are settled. Uh, uh. The only reason I didn't hit you in the face is because your damn sister would throw a fit. So be sure to thank her when you see her. And remember, never again. <coughs> Hand over your key. I get on my sight. Yes, sir. I, I am very sorry for everything, sir. Hmm. Was it all bullshit, Maria? I'm beginning to wonder myself. Not even a word before coming at me with a knife. Not even a sliver of faith in me. I've been at this long enough. I still haven't learned my lesson. I even not to think that maybe she would be different. That she would understand. No matter what anyone else said about me, believe me when I said I really was trying to help. I gave everything else up in the hopes of improving their lives. God, I'm such a fool. How many times do I need to be reminded that no one's on my side anymore? She was right about me. I am just a useless sack of human flesh. I should head up to the tower. Hmm. Mustak, that necklace. Maria must have dropped in and struggle. So, what'd you get her? As your big sister, I'd be happy to check the present out before you give it to her. Make sure you don't make too big an ass out of yourself. Today's the day, right? You give her the present, then you finally tell her how you feel. When she comes back, give her the necklace and tell her how you feel. And if she turns you down, we can all have a good laugh about it. I was positive I've been taking a broken raid. But you've been holding on to it? You kept it for all these years? I would have figured. We would have thrown it out away by now. Nicholas in hand, I made my way towards the observation tower. A thought bubbling up from the depths of my mind. It was a wretched, unsightly thing, which only swelled as I drew nearer. Never would I have conceived of such a monstrous notion, exploiting my old identity. I just drink it not fallen back into my hands. I knew Morgana was of sound mind, that the worst she saw was this twisted falsehood. And though I couldn't see what delusions her mind was producing, it was evident that the man was now and the boy she once knew were two distinct entities in it. So maybe if the old Jacobo was still good in her mind, and she still remembered him fondly, then perhaps it could assume that role, much like I assumed the role of the Lord. The thought sent a chill down my spine. By putting on that mask, I'd be disregarding every horrible thing I'd done to her. Every time I come up here, these past months to draw her blood, in that moment, there was no one in this whole wide world 
have fallen so close to hell as I. In that moment, I could no longer deny the menace that has taken root in my heart. The menace that has given rise to such a fancy. Morgana, do you know who I am? That's right, I'm the Lord. I'm the man who brought you a lifetime of pain. The man who locked you up in this tower, and the man who struck fear into your young heart seven years ago. Yes, I'll never forget. Now tell me, Morgana, do you know what this is? Earn your birthday four years ago. A young man was going to give you this necklace as a present. Do you remember that young man? I have you forgotten. Forgotten what a pleasant time that was. I can't say I'm surprised. You're always saying how much you hated staying at the brothel. Those three years were no more pleasant than any other time in your life. Do you remember them fondly? Yes. Well, that's great to hear. <laughs> you can rest at ease, Magana. Because you're going to be here soon and he'll... That was the only time. What? Except for those you My life's been nothing but pain. But those days... Everyone was so kind to me. They showed me love. It was all I had. The only had. No time in my life was better than that. But it was taken. I wish it had all just there. Uh, her words were like a plunge through thin ice. I could put on the best forged mask in all the world, but would never again be the man of her memories. I could act exactly like him, but would never be him. My hands were permanently stained with blood. The sharp smell of death hung around me like a cloud. I was a heartless killer, and anyone could see that. Never would I be able to smile like him. Never would I be able to share his dreams. The fact that I even had the idea to pretend to be my old self was proof in myself that I was gone too far. I reached a point where the real me was the imposter. He's dead. Why do you have that necklace? 
Did you kill him? Was that your... So the best thing I could do was let Morgana have her pleasant memories unmolested. I ruined enough for her already. She has said those three years were the happiest time of her life. I couldn't tell her the truth now. And there were no possible lies or justifications that would ever allow me to stand by her side again. You did, didn't you? I did. I killed a young man. I killed all of them. I killed and I killed until there wasn't a soul remaining. I... I knew it. You are the... the cruel... Oh. The most evil, irredeemable man to ever set foot on God's earth. That I am. I despise you more than anything. I... I hate... I... 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 Love you. I want nothing more than the put a curse. I bear my feelings for you, so don't get in the way of my being the Lord. I want to see you dead. But those feelings I never entirely went away. I try to wear what's more important to me. But I misread the scales. I hate you for all of my being. I lost any right I had to say this years ago. But I want you to know, I truly do love you. I revile you, detest you, love you. I loved you. There is not enough hate in all creation for you. Tell me, what do you see when you look at me? What do you hear when I speak to you? I hate you. 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 You can't see. It cheers to my cheeks. Can you? Your mind? Your spirit? I shout it beyond repair, aren't they? You're not actually understanding anything I say, are you? You're not going to be able to remember any of this, are you? I hate you. 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 Adam realizes it's gotten so bad. My eyes have been shut for far too long. To what was happening to you. To my own feelings. To everything. For so long, I have avoided facing the truth. Not only did I fail to protect anything, I destroyed. The one thing I care about most, with my own two hands. That's all I've ever managed to do. <laughs> I wonder, what is the point of no return exactly? This isn't the world I wanted to show you at all. I, of all people, sh should have done everything in my power to ensure those good days never ended. But any apology I make would just ring hollow. I hate you. 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 I hate you.
It seems my being here isn't doing your mental state any favors. So I'll lead your food here and, and get out. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. I would like to tell you this, though. If my family is certain you don't understand what I'm saying, tomorrow's the first day of the Harvest Festival. When it comes, I can finally do something I've been considering for a long time. I'm going to set you free. I'm going to put an end to all of this. I hate you. <laughs> the ship said long ago, I know. You're in no condition to go out into the world anymore. So I'm not just going to release you and forget about you. That's the plan, yes. We go out and find some place to die together. For as long as, long as I had the throne, a part of me has wanted to say, I'm done. I have no need of this anymore. But every time the thought rose in my mind, which pushed back down by a refrain of, so let all that work go to waste, Everything is sacrificed to get here. Back and forth, the voice would go day in and day out. In reality, it wasn't pride or desire to hold on to uh, my power that stopped me from doing this sooner. But the fear that everything I worked so hard for would be for naught. But now that I see, saw death looming over her, it was clear that only greater, more crushing despair awaited me. It would break me utterly. And if I end up abusing my people even worse than Barnier had, the best thing I could do for everyone was to end it all here, to stamp down off the stage. We're gonna want to release from my agony. Death was the only path she would find it down. My sickness was worsening by the day, and death's the only thing that could cure me. I chose the Harvest Festival in part because it seemed like a fitting end. But more because with everyone distracted by festivities, they weren't as likely to notice the Lord had gone missing. That's my final act of penance. I would find her somewhere with a gorgeous view to gaze upon as it took her life. Somewhere you could see almost over the horizon. Somewhere the sun shone bright and proud. Somewhere the fellow like could see the world. I came to full weight with her enmity on my shoulders. The Lord too would mean his end. Finding some place beautiful for her to depart this life from. What's all I could do to ease her pain? All I could do is to provide her a peaceful repose. All I could do is to pay for all I had done. On the first morning of the Harvest Festival, townspeople swarmed the new church's grounds. When I arrived, there were wide smiles on everyone's faces, from the young to the old, from those here to partake of the church charity, to well-off churchgoers. Everyone was in good spirits. We, it's a festival. <laughs> look, look, everything's got flowers on it. Quite an impressive event you put together. And that grace would have been with inside, perhaps, but for a church, any morning starts to look garish. Then go ham all they want down to the square. You don't seem very enthusiastic. Why would I be? You spent so much time preparing for it, I assumed you'd be more excited. Huh, <laughs> as if. 
It's all politics, not fun and games. An effort to bring unity to my people, you could say. I don't understand you at all. How can you spend so much time doing something you don't enjoy? I don't give a rat's ass if you understand me. Fair enough. When I first met you, I thought money and power were all you desired. I come to realize that's not the case. I'm beginning to think you're hardly a bad man after all. I knew you were an idiot, but I didn't realize you were that foolish. How can you possibly say I'm not a bad man, knowing all I've done? That's also fair. Hey, no running, kids. You're going to get yourselves hurt. What's the big deal? Run with us, Marie. <laughs> you shouldn't pull on people. That hurts. Uh... Good morning, Lord Barnier. Preparations are all complete here, and the stalls down in the city are ready to open up as soon as you give the word. Thank you. I couldn't be more thrilled to be part of such a wonderful celebration. I'm glad to hear it. Um, are you well? You look a bit tired. It comes with a job. It's hardly a day I'm not exhausted. Well, don't work yourself too hard, Lord Barnier. It's important to get your rest. I'll keep that in mind. Oh, I almost forgot. Would you like a flower, my lord? A flower? We made all sorts of flowers, accessories, and we're giving them out to anyone who wants one. They do the same sort of thing at the Midsummer Festival. And I like the idea so much I borrowed it. What do you say? I think this one will look lovely in your hair. I'll pass. That's a shame. And what do you say, Mr. Bodyguard? Care for a flower? No, uh, I... Go on, take it. Don't let the efforts go to waste. Very well, I'll take one then. <laughs> May God smile upon you. Thank you. Well, see you later. And Lord Barnier, if you need anything, please don't hesitate to ask. Hey, you're gonna have the day off. Go spend with your nun. Why the look? I'm merely surprised it would show any consideration for your dog. Well, it is a special occasion. I suppose. You used to say, watch out for yourself. You are assailed just last night. You didn't realize we were even capable of concern. It is a special occasion. <laughs> we'll take care of our usual business this afternoon. Should be able to bring a little more food than usual as well. Understood. Until then. Until then. Gabby. to heaven. They're sweet as far as I can see. Better her before they're up. Hey there, watch where you're going. Yes, so, so, Lord Barnier, I am so very sorry. 
Well, if it isn't Mel's sister. Sounds a bit too wound up, it seems. I've never been to a festival before, so I just... I'm... I'm terribly sorry for running into you. Please, don't get upset at me. Don't worry, I'm not upset. So you never went to any festivals in your homeland? What? Uh, um, no. I couldn't go to any because I was stuck at home all the time. Uh, I suppose you won't be able to get out much and spread your wings as the daughter of a noble family, huh? No, not in the slightest. It's all dresses and manners and no time for fun. I'm surprised. Most people just don't get it. So, I'm gonna spend all day celebrating with my mouth. <coughs> That's what the festival is for, but don't go too crazy. I'm telling you not in the best of health. <coughs> but I'm feeling wonderful today, so I'll be fine. You look anything but, girl. The festival isn't just for one day, so if you find yourself feeling unwell, let someone know right away they get some rest. Understood? Yes, sir. Nelly, where did you run off to? Nelly. What business do you have with my sister? You're a smell? I'm begging you. Don't hurt her. I'm not sure what this looks like to you, but I haven't touched her. What's gotten into you, dear smell? The Lord was just concerned about me. Concerned? Him? Not in a thousand years. No, we'll take care of business this afternoon. You must study at noon sharp. Uh, okay, I'll be there. lunch together? Running a festival must be a lot of work. Uh. I hear the sounds of countless people making merry outside, but my mind was elsewhere. Envisioning the place it would take her to die. Somewhere far away, somewhere with a majestic view. I wanted nothing more than to run off right then and there. But there were things that had to sort out before I could disappear. I delegated several days worth of work to my attendants so the festival wouldn't fall apart without me. My mind may have already been made up, but it was still my responsibility as Lord to ensure everything ran smoothly as long as I remained on the throne. But all I could do after it was pray to someone much more qualified. Someone actual drawer with descent step in to take my place. Before I knew it, noon was upon me. As the bell chimed at twelve, three of us climbed the observation tower. The plans deliver Morgana of food, then send the other two back outside, so I could take her somewhere far, far away. But when we opened the door, her spirit had already left her body. The witch killed her. The blood of the witch killed my sister. That wine you're drinking is no medicine. 
It's, it's the blood of the witch. You're all drinking witch blood. Ah! There goes another one. What's going on? We were told it was a miracle elixir. You say we've been drinking a witch's blood? Please, everyone, don't panic. It this must be some kind of mistake. A mistake? A girl is dead because of this mistake. No. This whole thing was a sham from the very beginning. You and the Lord were working together, buying our favor with this rubbish. I wonder if this is Please to be calm seen down, down everyone. Death. death to all the devil's deceitful minions. Death! 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 Stop it. Stay away from her. Get back. Death to him, too! That's what you get for coming in and making such a mess of our country, foreigner. Why are all these damn outsiders getting better treatment than the rest of us anyway? The Lord's a traitor to his own land. doesn't deserve to be on the throne. We'll take this city back. Free it from its corrupted grasp. Mm -hmm. Death to the traitor! Magona's death set off a chain of reaction of hell and suffering. Perhaps it was fate? Her intense animosity made manifest. I knew for sure was what I could see. The whole world was crumbling around me, and I watched through the observation tower's window. The first to go was Mel's sister, had regularly partaken of miracle elixir. She started vomiting blood, and shortly thereafter, she was dead. Mel then broke down, revealing the truth about the elixir before it stabbing himself in the throat. Fear and panic spread like a plague. Breeding a desperate rage that found an outlet in Santis, the face of the church. The far eastern man dashed in to protect her from the mob. As soon, a full on battle broke out between supporters and opponents of the Lord. <laughs> Actually, no. A battle would imply one side stood a fighting chance. It was close to a riot where everyone perceived to be on the Lord's side, ruthlessly slaughtered. It was as though I was peering into a nightmare. There's no question it would come out victorious. It was a scene I witnessed once before. But this time, I was on the receiving end. The illusory fate that had instilled in people to distract him from the dissatisfaction disappeared in a wisp. And upon discovering it was all based on a lie, that dissatisfaction came flooding back stronger than ever. I could tell myself I always had the people's best interests in mind until I went blue in the face. But it didn't matter. I was a tyrant in their eyes. I turned away, and there lay Morgana's limp's body. For a split second, I considered going over, leaning against the wall beside her, and taking my own life. With my foot hovering in the air, I swung my leg around, making my way towards the stairs. I'd done enough to torment her in life, failing to even allow her to pass on peacefully. Be cruel and disrespectful to force her to be with me. The man she despised more than any in the world, and death as well. As I was still the Lord, having not yet stepped off the throne, the right thing to do would be facing the wrath that I wrought. For a second, I wondered. And maybe Lord Barnier had greeted us thinking the same. The revolution four years ago was also a foregone conclusion. But he didn't run, he stayed and waited for us to arrive. Perhaps it was partially pride. 
partially that it was the only way out. We had lived as lords, we had ruled as lords. When the time come, came to harvest the seeds we had sown, we would die as we had lived. When it reached the ground level of the tower, I could hear shouting and banging and stomping through the door. They were probably tearing the mansion apart looking for me. Find them, they cried. Dethrone them, they cried. Burn them, they cried. I felt a slight pang of nostalgia as I listened to them, remembering when it had been their position. All I had to do was open the door. I'd be dead in seconds. They didn't just have me vastly outnumbered. I had no intention of fighting. My life amounted to nothing. My people are all dying. Soon I'll be stripped my title of the Lord of Land. And not a thing will be left. It was all utterly meaningless. I killed everyone I ever cared about. Even Magana. There's not a single person. No. And then I'm killing Maria. <laughs> I guess that's something to be thankful for. I pray you'll live on. By all means, spend the rest of your life hating me. So as long as you live, so now off I go. I stepped up before my people, and a dozen bloodshot gazes snapped onto me all at once. I raised my hand in preparation to give them a few parting words. I lowered again without saying anything. There's nothing for me to say anymore. In order to have the willpower to produce words, They impaled me from head to toe with sickles and pitchforks and all manners of deadly implements. No longer able to support my own weight, I fell back against the door, sliding to the ground. I could feel the life draining from my body. The voices grew faint. Were they shouting, grieving, cheering? I could no longer tell the difference. My consciousness quickly slipped away. As it did, Flashes of memories whisk past. A child fighting to survive day by day. A young man with his head in the clouds, hellbent and going out into the world. A crowd of friends hooting and howling in a pub. Girls at a brothel, constantly teasing but always reliable. And you at my side. I thought I felt a gust of wind, guiding my got in Jackable's mind towards one particular memory. I don't need a seat. All I want is... I hear your voice with incredible clarity. And I was so many years. I finally figured out what she had said that day. Not long after we met, I told her that I thought he might come from the same region. Now perhaps he went back far enough. He might find we even shared a bloodline. And she remembered. Nearly three years later, she still remembered an insignificant conversation. Which is why she didn't want to see the world. She's more than happy to just find the land from which we came. I never needed to reign supreme. I never need to favor Damasus. All I need to do is go looking for that little pocket of tranquility. I 
I stand before a gorgeous golden field. Flowers bloom all around, swaying it in a warm breeze. Vaguely familiar faces smile and laugh. At the long, hard journey, we finally made it. There's no big, bustling city in one extra in extravagant clothing. But they welcome us warm warmly. Welcome us, us kin. It is a quiet land, not a trace of strife. The bask in harmony. Smile on everyone's faces. Nevertheless, she's still afraid of how they might treat her. So I offer her my hand. This is it. This is our home. As we draw closer to our home, her tense nerves seem to loosen. And she lets out a barely audible sigh. She slowly, slowly draws back the hood covering her. The soft light of the sun shining down. The veil for the first time. Her face? A beautiful girl stands there. So enchanting I find myself lost for words. A smile rises to her face. Now free of the hideous mark that once covered it. A smile brighter than I ever before seen. The lush field stretching out behind her. Accentuate the glimmering gold of her eyes. I stand there, silently taking in the sight. My braids flutter in the breeze. A sky blue as sapphire drapes the scenery. She isn't a witch here. She's an ordinary girl. And me, an ordinary boy. We have no power, no extraordinary abilities. I can't think of anything more wonderful. With all the weight lifted from my soul, I give a soft sigh, looking her in the eyes, and a chuckle, remembering something she once said. He told me to prepare to be let down. Ordinary though we may now be, our banter remains unchanged. And I know she's got a snarky response waiting to let loose. This is what I could have had if I made the right choices. What I wanted. Wanted anything in the world. Damn! Everyone's lost their fucking minds! I need to get the hell out of the city, and fast! On the first day of the Harvest Festival, 
I got this crazy bad sinking feeling. So I went to check out that new church across the bridge. Some kind of riot or uprising or something had happened. Who is, who is this? <laughs> Just continue. It's you. Okay. Yeah. But it was all finished by the time I got there. And not long after, the truth of what the Lord had been doing came to light. I wish I'd never heard a damn thing. I didn't need anyone to tell me he wasn't the guy I grew up with. But never in my wildest dreams had I imagined he was that far gone. All the time in the world wasn't enough to make sense of that. The valuable asset he had been storing in the observation tower was, of all fucking things, the girl we'd looked after a few years back. Morgana. But the madness didn't end there. The witch with the miracle blood everyone had been talking about. That was her too. My mind was so scrambled, I wasn't sure what to be most stunned by. But I have far less time to organize my thoughts or vent my frustration than I could have imagined. If I were smart, I would have left town the instant I learned the truth. After the riot, a strange sickness began spreading through the city. If you caught it, your skin would start turning black, then before long you'd be vomiting blood. Anyone who tried to treat it was infected themselves. The people called it the witch's curse. Get your heads out of the sand! There's no... I tried to say, there's no such thing as curses. But I couldn't bring myself to finish. As much as I wanted to believe it wasn't, I was starting to think that maybe the curse was real. Especially thinking back on the scene at the top of the tower. The heavy air in the chamber, her dead body's eyes wide open. The eerie glimmer in those eyes that I was pretty sure I hadn't imagined. It was like I had stepped into another world. And I could barely keep myself vertical. If she really was a witch, then yeah, that scene was a pretty damn convincing argument in favor of the existence of her curse. It didn't matter that she was dead. And even me, the least superstitious girl around, was starting to consider it a possibility. So the people who had actually believed in the miracle elixir were freaking right the fuck out. They had seen what the Lord had done to her. How much pain and suffering he had caused her. It was easy to believe she hated the world enough to curse it. That's what witches did, after all. And the city was scared to death. First, they tried to seal the curse into the observation tower. But that didn't stop its spread. So next, they went after anyone who had known her in life. And punished them. <sighs> Almost there. The forest isn't far. There she is! That's her! Shit! They discovered that the witch had taken refuge at a brothel a few years back. And it wasn't long before they linked me to it. Making me their next target. None of us at the brothel had any idea Morgana's blood possessed that kind of power. 
but the more I tried to defend myself, the more they began to suspect me, thinking every word a ruse. The whole city had gone completely batshit. It's right there. Like hell I'm gonna let them catch me. Ah! Fuck! My arm! <clears throat> She's down, boys! Get her! N no No! Get off me, asshole! Get away from me! Ah! What, what the hell do you think you're doing? Wait! A bunch of men dragged me to the church and tossed me in the cellar. I could hear them shouting through the locked door. Oh witch, oh great witch! We offer unto you punishment for those who wrong and forsook you in life. So please, we beg of you, stay your anger. Have mercy upon us. Hey, have you assholes lost your fucking minds? I didn't do a goddamn thing to her. I never wronged her, and I sure as hell didn't forsake her. I didn't have any idea what that sick fuck was doing to her. Oh, great witch! Please spare us from the wrath of your curse. Please have mercy on us who not laid our hands upon you. Oh, witch, oh, witch, oh, great witch! You're fucked in the heads, every last one of you. You're not accomplishing anything by putting me down here. So let me out, please. Let me out of here. <sighs> Damn it, they really did. Leave me here. The door's locked tight. I'm not pounding my way through this. Damn thing won't even budge. Fuck. Fucking. Fuck! Something. There has to be something I can do. Hey! Is anyone out there? Someone! Let me out of here! I didn't do anything! <sighs> How long have I been in here? I'm so fucking thirsty. Food. That would be nice too. Someone get me out of here. Please. I feel like my body's made of stone. I'm... I'm going to starve to death in here. You gotta be kidding. <laughs> oh god, I feel sick. I... my everything hurts. dark. I never noticed. All the black patches on my skin. 
Why? The curse? But I never did anything to you. Why? Why would you curse me? Why, Morgana? What did I do? <laughs> you, you didn't mean to, did you? It was just a little mistake, wasn't it? You can still take it back. There's time, just take it off me. I didn't do anything to deserve this. I didn't do anything to deserve being cursed. Come on, spare me. This is all on his fucking head, not mine. <sighs> Is it because I didn't do anything? Is that it? Are you saying that I'm to blame too because I didn't do anything to stop it? Because I couldn't trust anyone but myself? That's... That's asking way too much. How was I even supposed to know what was going on? I was up to my neck in my own shit already. Come on, Morgana. Give me a little sympathy. Spare me from your curse. I can barely move my body at all. I feel like I'm all out of blood to cough up. I don't even have the energy to cry for help anymore. So this, this is how I go, huh? And when I'm gone, that means everyone's dead. <laughs> I wonder what whoever finds my body will think. I'll probably think that I was one of them. Now wouldn't that be some real bullshit? Me. I know how to write. I'm a woman in the horror and from the slumps. Look at me. I can read and write. Pretty impressive, huh? <laughs> Why? I forgot how I learned, though. Oh, right. I had a friend who was doing some really important work. So I studied so I could help them out. If they ever needed anything. <laughs> and I'll make sure to write it all fancy and proper. So no one suspects it was written by a whore. I'd make a kick-ass aid. Who were they, though? I can't remember anymore. You hear that? I'm innocent. The sinners are the ones who lived here. It was all him. Not me. <laughs> so if, if somehow there's something after this and our souls live on, please, 
only curse them. They're the bad guys. It's all, all the their fault. Maria, wake up, Maria. <laughs> I've unlocked the door for you. Now get up. You don't want to be sleeping on the cold, hard floor. Uh, Morgana. What? How? You're dead. Oh, I'm dead, am I? <laughs> and you must be half asleep still. But I... No, that's enough of that. Let's get you out of here, shall we? How? I can barely move. I think you'll find that untrue, my dear. Go on, stand up. Ah. You were right. I can move, and I feel better than ever. It's like I was just imagining all the pain. See? What did I tell you? Now, come. Let's get out of this dreadful place. They're waiting for you. Huh? I think it's Sharon. Have... I think it's Sharon, too. <laughs> oh, it's about time you showed up, boss. What? Hey, I'm so glad you're okay. I've been worried out of my mind. Jaren? I was told you were killed. What? Do you really want me that that bad, boss? N no, I never said that. And you're a model worker, too. I've always been glad to have you around. Must have been real wrong in their uncles. I can't believe all those bad men would just lock you up. It's not nice. How's the city doing? Are things cleared up? You can rest easy. Everything's all right to you now. That's... I'm glad to hear it. Gresham... Yes? Uh, I'll go for it. You look like someone just pissed in your stew, girl! Where's that burning fire in your eyes? Ah. Hey there! I knew a little solitary wouldn't get the best of you, girl. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Don't just stare. What? You think I was dead too? 
Like hell! Ain't nothing this whole damn world could take me down. And the crew's number one for good reason. <laughs> That's right. You are, aren't you? You survived living as a slave in Barnier's mansion. Man, I... There's not much that could kill you. Damn straight! <laughs> Don't you worry about nothing. As long as I'm around, nothing can touch our slums. Yeah, I believe you. So, hey. If you're alive, does that mean... That it does. We're all alive. Every last one of us. You're never a morning person, but it is a bit ridiculous, don't you think? Backflow. Is that... Is that really you? Is it really the same old Jackfo I used to know? What do you mean you used to know? I'm the same old Jackfo you always known. But... But you... You became the Lord, and then... And then you... You killed everyone. Do you really have that little faith in me? Who did that never kill any of you? You know that. Just look around. Does, does anyone look dead to you? Because they sure look alive to me. Whatever terrible dream you were having down there, Maria, it's about time you came back to reality. But I... Look me in the eyes. Tell me you're not the same Jackabo you always known. No. You're definitely you. The same old friend I've always known. <laughs> See? Was that so hard? Well, we got the whole gang here, so why say we go do something? Hit the pub, maybe? Oh, now that's a plan! We're well overdue for another drinking contest. I am. Um, I'm not comfortable in such lively places. Come on, just this once. We can sing together, even. Your voice will have the whole place enchanted in a snap. I. I won't be seen. But I suppose I could join you once. The chance doesn't come around often. Oh, come on. You never want to go when I ask, but you will if she does? You could be drowning and I still wouldn't agree to do anything you ask. So that's irrelevant. I'm not going because Jiren invited me. But, for Maria. Will you join us? You bet your butt I will. Ah, I'm so... So glad. So glad. That everyone's alive. It was all a dream. Just a bad dream. I knew it. None of that could ever happen to us. <laughs> Save a seat for me, guys. I'm coming. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> 